Nefertiti, the principal wife of Pharaoh Amenhotep, flourished in the 14th century BC. Written records containing definite historical facts concerning her origins, marriage, family life, political status, and death are rare. Join us as we look at 10 mysteries behind Nefertiti's bust. 10. Nefertiti Queen. 3,000 years ago, Nefertiti vanished without a trace. Could the long-lost Egyptian queen be just around the corner? The journey to find the discovery of the century begins on Egypt's Nile, in a valley outside of Luxor. The sun god, Aten, punishes those who dare to enter with temperatures that exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Some archaeologists believe Queen Nefertiti's final resting place is hidden inside King Tut's tomb in a hidden chamber. However, the queen's mystery dates back more than three millennia. Nefertiti co-ruled Egypt with her husband, Amenhotep IV. Her surname translates into, a beautiful woman has arrived. She vanished after reigning for 12 years. Some Egyptologists believe she took a new name and became co-regent, while others believe she died. The simple but vivid hieroglyphics adorning the yellow walls are the first clues. One section appears to depict a mummy and a pharaoh. An expert explains that the artwork's subtle details are like depictions of Tut and Nefertiti in other works. The artwork discovered inside King Tut's tomb is like other artworks depicting the boy king and Nefertiti. There was no preconceived notion among experts that Nefertiti was buried here. To be honest, they fought the conclusion for a while because it seemed so out of the ordinary, but the evidence seems to point in this direction. Although no definitive answer is expected anytime soon, experts agree that if proven correct, King Tut will be dethroned and his tomb will be known as the tomb of Nefertiti. 9. Nefertiti Bust The bust of Nefertiti, created around 1340 in the ancient Egyptian city of Akhenaten, now known as Amarna, is a sculpted bust of Queen Nefertiti, who reigned alongside her husband, Pharaoh Amenhotep IV, later known as Akhenaten. The bust was discovered in the workshop of Thutmose, a famous sculptor who created plaster busts of the royal family. It is one of the most well-known antiquities from ancient Egypt. Despite being found alongside sculptures of other royal family members, the bust of Nefertiti is arguably his most famous work. The bust of Nefertiti is famous not only for its vibrant colors and iconic representations of beauty, but also for its contentious history as an antiquity. To understand how Nefertiti became such a popular regent in Egyptian history, it is necessary to describe the cultural changes that were taking place in Egypt at the time. The change in religion was one of the most significant events in Egypt at the time. The ancient Egyptian religion was always polytheistic, worshipping more than one god. During his reign, Akhenaten attempted to convert Egypt's official religion from polytheism to monotheism. The sun disk god, Aten, was the god Akhenaten chose to worship. Following his marriage to Nefertiti and the start of his reign as pharaoh, Akhenaten changed his name from Amenhotep to Akhenaten and relocated his family from Thebes to a new city he named Akhenaten. 8. Description of Nefertiti's Bust The bust of Nefertiti has been very well preserved. The erect portion of the cobra has been severed, as have two small pieces of the wig's pointed upper edge on the right and left. A greater piece of the plaster coating has flaking off on the left side. Both ears are broken. Some fragments have since been reattached on the right. The left eye's inlay is missing, because no traces of a binding agent were found in the eye socket, and the background is smooth and not depressed in any way to accept an inlay. A little bit of the right shoulder has been chipped off. Additionally, there are scarcely noticeable scratches on the face, nose, etc. In several places, traces of impure moisture are visible, probably resulting from rainwater. The muscles of the nape and sides of the neck are represented so gently that one imagines them flexing beneath the delicate skin, which is rendered in a healthy tint. Egyptian sculptors rarely attempted to depict emotion in their artwork's faces, but this face embodies tranquility and composure. From the front, it has total mirror symmetry, and yet it is completely evident to the viewer that he is not gazing at some created ideal. 7. Possible Hidden Chambers of Nefertiti Tomb Archaeologists have spent years searching in vain for the tomb of the ancient Egyptian queen Nefertiti. Now, renowned Egyptologist Zahi Hawass believes he has made the long-awaited find. Hawass is a member of an Egyptian-led delegation that reported that antiques uncovered near Luxor resembled amulets believed to be King Tut's. It also discovered the mummy in question that month on Luxor's West Bank. They already have DNA from mummies dating from Akhenaten to Amenhotep, the second or the third of the 18th dynasty, as well as two nameless mummies labeled KV-21A and B. In tomb KV-35, there is also the mummy of a 10-year-old boy. She was King Tut's stepmother, 
and the wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten, who ruled over a wealthy period. Akhenaten changed Egypt into a monotheistic state, worshipping the solar disk Aten. His heirs attempted to obliterate his name and legacy. His capital was destroyed, and artworks depicting his likeness and name. The role of Nefertiti as ruler is still debated. Two items are still missing, Nefertiti's grave and her body. 6. Discovery In our thumbnail, we can see, on the left, a semblance of the bust of Nefertiti made from what I think is clay, and on the right, what looks like the original bust of Nefertiti discovered by Borbor Chart in 1912. The bust of Nefertiti is one of the world's most famous ancient Egyptian finds. Nefertiti was the wife of Akhenaten, the famed pharaoh who instituted a new monotheistic religion of the sun god that replaced all other gods' worship. He portrayed himself as the sun god's embodiment. Nefertiti was his queen from the 350s to the 330s BC, over 3.5 thousand years ago. The royal pair resided in Akhenaten's new capital Amarna, which was located roughly midway between Cairo and Luxor. Ludwig Borchardt, a German archaeologist, investigated the remnants of an old home in Amarna on December 6, 1912. Thutmose, a sculptor, had been recognized as the owner of the house. More than 20 plaster molds, some incomplete or barely sketched, stone heads completed, and others yet to be finished, were discovered in one of the rooms. They discovered a skin-colored neck in the ruins. The excavators set aside their instruments and used their hands to unveil the lower section of the bust and subsequently the blue headpiece. The portrait of Nefertiti was nearly complete. The colors were still so vibrant, according to Ludwig Borchardt, that they appeared to be freshly painted. The missing portions of the left ear were uncovered. The missing left eye was also discovered, but never found. Borchardt only realized later that this eye had never been installed and therefore the bust had never been completed. The bust is thought to have been set on a wooden shelf and collapsed due to a collapse, although it remained virtually whole and was later preserved by the rubble above. Ludwig Borchardt was unable to continue construction at the site after World War I broke out in 1914. 5. Mystery of Sculpture's Missing Eye I'm sure you've noticed that the queen's head on the bust is missing her left eyeball. The archaeologists who discovered it initially assumed it had fallen off and worked hard to recover it. The quartz eye, however, did not appear. Another alternative is that she would have lost her eye in life, but this theory was rejected because there are other sculptures and reliefs of her that show her with it. Over time, the researchers discovered that the hollow where it had to be lodged was exceedingly smooth, with no evidence of glue, which at the time was beeswax. This was exceedingly weird because it implied that the eye had never gone from the queen's face. Consider the pharaoh and queen hiring the master sculptor with numerous statues and reliefs depicting their likenesses. It's too much labor to do by yourself. As a result, he managed a workshop where he collaborated with assistants and young apprentices. Many believe he constructed this bust so that his workers and students would know what the queen looked like and could duplicate her face on other monuments of her. In other words, it was a model that the master sculptor may have left unfinished on purpose so his students could obtain practical classes on how to insert the eyes into the sockets. On the other hand, it's tough to imagine that such a lovely and unique artwork could just serve this purpose. The mystery has not yet been solved. 4. Controversial Ownership Despite opposition to attempts to repatriate the historical artifact, Egypt is continuing efforts to retrieve the famed bust of Nefertiti from Germany. In recent years, Cairo has led an effort to reclaim antiquities that have been illegally trafficked elsewhere. The bust of Nefertiti, queen of ancient Egypt's 18th dynasty, was unearthed in Minya Governorate in 1912 by a German team led by archaeologist Ludwig Borchardt. Borchardt illegally took the artwork out of Egypt in 1913, violating archaeological treaties. Foreign archaeologists were compelled to hand up major antiquities at the time. Other minor discoveries would be shared by the international teams and the Egyptian museum. The work was discovered in the studio of Thutmose, widely known as the king's favorite and master of works, and is highly valued for its artistic worth as well as the significance of its builder. Germany, on the other hand, claims that the bust was obtained legitimately as part of Borchardt's share of the discovery. Since the early 1920s, Egypt has endeavored unsuccessfully to retrieve the bust from the Germans. Hitler reportedly refused to return the statue in 1933 because he wanted it to be put in a museum in Germania, his intended capital. Following World War II, King Farouk of Egypt attempted to return the statue through the Allied Control Council in Germany. 
former Supreme Council of Antiquities, Secretary General Zahi Hawass wrote to Germany in 2011 to request the return of the bust. Egypt's most recent attempt to recover the priceless item came in 2020, when Minister of Tourism and Antiquities Khaled Al-Anani reaffirmed Cairo's resolve to return the bust. Anani stated on television that Germany had refused to repatriate the bust to Egypt, but had given him five other artifacts for repatriation. Meanwhile, German authorities claim the statue belongs to the Neues Museum. There are currently no talks underway with Egypt to return the statue, which is owned by Berlin's Neues Museum. All German officials stated that Egypt made no official requests for the bust's return, but that Germany is always open to negotiations. 3. Disappearance from Historical Records After the twelfth year of her husband Akhenaten's reign, Nefertiti vanishes from history. The precise cause of her disappearance is unknown, and there are numerous ideas and assumptions as to what happened to her. Some experts believe Nefertiti died before her husband, presumably in the early years of his reign. It is known that Akhenaten had multiple daughters, and one of them could have succeeded Nefertiti as queen. However, the precise identity of Akhenaten's successors is unknown, and there is little substantial evidence to back up any idea. One of the most controversial ideas concerning Nefertiti's disappearance is that she acquired a new identity as Neferneferuaten and co-ruled with her husband, Akhenaten. This notion is supported by several grounds, including the fact that many of the monuments and structures associated with Akhenaten's reign bear the name Neferneferuaten alongside Akhenaten's. According to some historians, Neferneferuaten was not a separate person, but rather a moniker chosen by Nefertiti during a period of political or religious instability. According to this hypothesis, Nefertiti took on the name and title of co-regent to secure her position of power and authority during a period of transition in ancient Egypt. There are both linguistic and artistic indications that point to Nefertiti and Neferneferuaten being the same person. Some inscriptions and photographs, for example, imply that the two people had a similar facial structure and dress style, prompting some historians to believe that they were the same person. Despite these intriguing possibilities, historians are divided over the identity of Neferneferuaten and the degree of Nefertiti's influence throughout this period of ancient Egyptian history. 2. Hideous Replica Removed from Public Display Following a backlash on local and social media, Egypt's Minya governance ordered the removal of a statue depicting ancient Egyptian Queen Nefertiti. The monument, a duplicate of the famous Queen Nefertiti figure on exhibit at Berlin's Neues Museum, was dismantled less than a day after it was discovered near the city's entry. Pictures of the oversized monument went viral on social media, eliciting hundreds of snarky remarks and complaints, especially given that the original Nefertiti sculpture is regarded as a beacon of beauty. Many comments referred to the statue as hideous, terrifying, and zombie, with analogies to Frankenstein's monster. 1. Restoration of Nefertiti Nefertiti's opponents worked hard to destroy any traces of her existence, we know she lived between 1370, was the most beloved of Pharaoh Akhenaten's two wives, and had titles such as Great Royal Wife, Mistress of Joy, and Lady of Grace. New naturalistic art depicts her wearing attire, titles, and posing in positions formerly designated for male pharaohs. She even stood in for the goddesses that guarded the corners of her husband's coffin. In 1912, an astonishing bust of the queen's face was discovered amid the remains of Akhenaten's abandoned royal city. Amarna. It was discovered in an artisan's workshop beside the crushed remains of a similar stucco-coated limestone picture of her spouse. According to more recent research using CT scans, the sculpture has a limestone core rendered by a gypsum stucco layer. The scan revealed that the inner face had been carved, with bags under the eyes, creases around the mouth and cheeks, and a swelling on the nose. The painted stucco layer eliminates these natural signs of aging, resulting in a more perfect image. Because the head is incomplete, it is uncertain what the final statue would have looked like when assembled in its entirety, or where it was intended to be displayed. The quartzite head, on the other hand, was clearly designed to be part of a composite statue and was fitted with a headpiece, perhaps a crown or a wig. It's clear, after seeing these videos, that Nefertiti still remains a great mystery. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded.
Thank you for watching and see you next time.